boys and girls. I want to show you a picture today of a really neat bird that we're going to talk about. This is called a golden, a golden plover. P-L-O-V-E-R. Plover. Now I'm going to show you another picture. This is what they look like when they get their uh, colors in the springtime. Notice the dark face, the white on the body. I want to tell you a story about this little bird. Well, not really a story, it's facts about this little bird and then um, discuss how it applies to us and to our God who cares. These birds are very small. They're only about four to eight ounces in size. Now to compare that, if you get a uh, carton, little carton of milk, uh, one of those small cartons, or like a juice box, that's about the size of those, okay? The golden plover is a very interesting little bird because every year it makes a 6,000 mile round trip migration from Hawaii to Alaska and back to Hawaii. The bird lives in Hawaii most of the year, but when it starts getting uh, springtime, they go to Alaska and spend a couple months there nesting and hatching their eggs. These birds, you might think, well, what's so great about that? A 6,000 mile migration trip is over the ocean. It's all over the Pacific Ocean. And they don't have any maps. They don't have any radar or GPS systems, somebody telling them bad weather's coming, uh, it's getting dark, you need to stop for the night, there's a storm coming at sea. No, these little birds persevere and they fly the entire flight without stopping. This is really interesting. Scientists, it baffles them because they shouldn't really be able to do that because of their size and um, the distance and the conditions that they're flying through. But God made them and instinctively they have instincts um, God put in them that they know where they're going. Now this is really neat. Let me tell you a few things about this. When they fly to Alaska and they um, lay their eggs and then their eggs hatch, right from the beginning, after the baby bird comes out of the egg, the parents do not feed the bird. The bird has to fend for itself and find insects. The neat thing about this is where they go in Alaska, in the Alaskan tundra, at that time of year, each year, there is a big infestation of insects. So they have plenty to eat. And they need plenty to eat for this journey because they have to store up body fat so that they can make the trip because they don't stop anywhere to eat. They're just going over the ocean. So they eat a lot of insects. They increase their body weight by 70%. Their wings grow stronger. And then they use up that body fat as they fly. Isn't that something? Now you might think this is bad, but the parent birds go off and leave the baby birds for about a month. They leave Alaska early and fly to Hawaii. 
Then a month later, without ever having done it before, the baby birds all get together and they take off and they make the flight to Alaska. Amazing, isn't it? In Luke, God tells us through Jesus, Jesus said, not a sparrow falls to the ground, but your heavenly Father knows. God cares for even a sparrow, even a little golden plover. He instinctively gives them their own GPS where they know where to go, where they're flying. And that trip, when they're going, they will flap their wings over a half million times. It would take someone uh, two and a half days if they were uh, measuring the, the bird's flight, that's how long it would take for them to make that trip. Right from the start, they go to the exact same spot and they return to the same spot. Who told them to do that? Who showed them the way? God put it in them so that they know and I think this is neat because it, we can compare their perseverance um, to us because God has told us that he has prepared a home for us. We've never been there. We don't know the directions. We don't know where it is. But he knows the way. Listen to 1 Corinthians 2.9. This is what scripture means when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. We can't even imagine how wonderful it's going to be like. And that takes me into the next part of our little video today. We're going to read a book called I Can Only Imagine. You've probably heard this song on the radio if uh, you listen to Christian radio stations. It was a popular song for a long, long time. Then it came out in a movie and it got popular again. But this is um, a children's book about this song by Bart Millard of the group Mercy Me. I can only imagine a friendship with Jesus now and forever. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. The more I imagine, the more I wish I knew. If I went to heaven, just what would I do? Would I wear scratchy robes and sing in a choir? Would I bounce in the clouds, going higher and higher? Do you wake up in heaven with your hair all a mess? Must you make your bed right before you get dressed? Is there breakfast in heaven? When your tummy's all rumbly? Are there fluffy pancakes and biscuits so crumbly? Do the houses in heaven have big rooms and spaces? Did God think of me when he built all those places? Like basketball courts? A swing, a slide, or a super cool playhouse with doors on two sides. The more I imagine, the more I wish I knew. If I spent the day with God, what exactly would we do? Would 
Jesus play with me? Would he like what I like? Would he race with a wagon or ride on a bike? Would God feel what I feel? Would he see what I see? Would he like to go on an adventure with me? I can only imagine what God thinks is fun. We could jump in the lake and soak in the sun. Splishing and splashing and shouting, hooray! Would God like to float on a warm summer day? Just saw a pretty bird fly by. How about ice cream? It's a heavenly treat. Strawberry swirls, my favorite to eat. I bet heaven serves ice cream before lunch each day. And the scoops are ginormous, like an ice cream bouquet. Why, maybe in heaven God loves to play ball. Everyone gets chosen. There's room for us all. Throwing and catching, learning to slide. When the game's done, we'd all give high five. Surely the music in heaven is grand. We'll sit around the fire, make our own band. The sound is so pretty, we'll all sing along. I wonder the name. God's favorite song. What about animals? God made them all. From soft fluffy bunnies to crickets so small. My big dog Lulu is the greatest one yet. Are puppies God's favorite? Does God have a pet? When I get to heaven, can I sit on God's knee? We'll all cuddle up close and hear his story of how Jesus was born of his time on earth. He'll tell us he loves us and show us our worth. Thank you, dear God, for keeping me close. Being with you is what I like most. We know you, we love you, we'll be there together. Each day we'll be happy in heaven forever. I'm sure of one thing that will always be true. I don't have to wait to spend time with you. You're here in my heart. Your spirit will guide. You'll never leave me. You'll stay by my side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me, when we're walking together, Jesus and me. I can only you enjoyed that story and maybe spend some time thinking about what it will be like when we are with our Lord and our God and Father in Heaven. Um, keep practicing your books of the Old Testament. That video should still be up so that you can go back and do that. And if you want to read more about or hear about or watch a video about the Golden Plover, you can go to YouTube and just put that in. And there's a neat video there um, that talks about God in the video and the Golden Plover. So I hope you learned something new today. 
and I hope you have a great day, and um, spring is coming, it'll get here, okay, God bless.